Hello and good evening everyone. Uh, my name is David Hibbert. I'm what for Orkney Islands Council and my day job is with Marine Services looking after the ferry fleet and the harbour infrastructure. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about something entirely different from my day job. This is uh, trucks and tractors and larger vehicles where bigger energy requirements are, are needed other than the, the cars and, and smaller vehicles that you might see currently supplied by battery power. Now the, the big challenge we're up against is really the, uh, the existing vehicles and all our transport needs have pretty much had over 100 years of development in them and that is how, where they've ended up and that's given us as consumers an expectation of what these means of transport and delivery of goods and services and carrying out tasks should do which is probably much bigger or a better can be done uh, with current renewables yes on my second slide here i'm talking about where batteries are not required where the energy need is bigger than batteries can, can possibly supply be it for a day's work in a in a digging uh, foundations out on a large project or moving 44 ton trucks around or, or uh, moving uh, large implements around a farm uh, field. So to illustrate this on the right hand side uh, we can see the existing fuel types in grey and slight on the diagram. The right hand side of the or the further I go across the diagram indicates the amount of energy you can get packed into a, a small space. It's, it's in terms of litres. You can see diesel petrol is at the top of that scale and, and down below that is in the green is what is currently uh, some of the renewables that are available, uh, be it ammonia, uh, various types of hydrogen and batteries. And we can see unfortunately batteries are pretty much right at the bottom of that, be it this diagram is slightly out of date but nevertheless it, it's pretty much where they are at the moment in terms of energy density. So realistically, what can we do about that? Um, we have to move up from batteries to do something better, to make uh, heavier haulage and uh, items that need more than and batteries can supply move and, and be acceptable for use for, for a day's work. In Orkney, we've, we focus pretty much on the, in the hydrogen space at the moment. Uh, you'll see the, the first uh, four items on the, on the list on the left there, a surf and tough, big hit, high down, high CC, are all hydrogen projects. Uh, involving marine uh, land heating and, and generation of power through fuel cells and production of green hydrogen. Uh, a lot of expertise has been uh, developed and uh, the, these projects are stepping stones, so experiences was gained right through these. We have another project in, in the background with Caledonian LNG. Um, LNG is interesting as, uh, as in the methane can either be produced uh, from uh, fossil fuel or it actually can be produced from biomass as in biomethane. Further south and in Europe we see uh, large uh, truck units running on LNG uh, like Stobart Haulage, uh, I think Tesco's may have operated some on that. So these, are, these are quite effective being not, not quite up in the range of diesel but uh, it's certainly above anything at, at the moment that uh, current renewable technology can offer. And the final point is the uh, the, the LCTT or uh, Low Carbon Transport and Travel. This is where we're going to plug the Hamnevo into a, a large scale uh, shore power connection just to stop diesel engines running. And that's, that is probably the most effective way of, of using renewables is basically to plug it in wherever possible. But of course, infrastructure is the problem. Yeah, so where are we going? Uh, this is all very, very confusing uh, because of these choices out there. It's it's simple, and if you're in the, the car sector, you know you can see the the battery vehicles and the, the hybrids pretty much starting to become consolidated now. So it, it's at that level of energy use, maybe 25 to 50 kilowatt hours over over a day. The clarity is coming there. Uh, when when we're looking at the, above that. It's very confusing. There's a lot, a lot of fog out there about what we should do. There's a lot of choices to make. As I said in the last slide, uh, Orkney's going down the hydrogen route. I think that will probably determine what the best solutions are in, in this area. However, we'll just quickly look at a couple of other points here. Um, 
that's why I'm saying horses for courses. You, you really need to make sure what renewable energy you pick will have enough to deliver what you need to do over a full day's work or whatever period that may, may be. In, in, in marine space, we're looking at the, the biggest uh, items or the biggest things we're going to produce or propel with hydrogen is, is under two megawatts and, uh, and less than 24 hours, and basically because that's as much hydrogen as we can pack in it without horribly compromising uh, cargo carrying abilities for the, these types of things. Again, this, this will directly correlate across to uh, heavy transport and heavy uh, machinery sort of side, how much space you need to, to set aside for your energy storage. Uh, again, uh, in, in the larger space, we see LNG uh, displacing uh, heavy fuel oils and diesels, uh, particularly if they become sourced from bio sources. Sweden is looking to remove all of its uh, fossil LNG out of its gas network and replace it with biomethane, that's, that's a fairly substantial ask. And that year is 2025, they're projecting that by. So that, that can be done. So certainly certainly that may become an option uh, coming through. Uh, I'll not just mention the biomethanol, uh, which is, is another option. Some, particularly Scandinavian countries with a lot of feedstock, have that available. And that, that's possibly clouding the picture for us to look at as well. Ammonia, there is a lot of people come pushing that uh, to come through uh, with a local project mooted. Um, it, it may become a possibility, but remembering it does, does have toxicity issues uh, to overcome, but I'm sure that they'll get through these uh, and it'll become a realistic possibility. So just remember uh, what technology we have available uh, at, the, at the time and, and what it's currently available to do for you. Final point is, of course, the obvious one, always plug in the mains wherever possible. Um, trolley buses, uh, trams, possibly not going to be a factor in Orkney, but uh, we see uh, transport systems in the south where, where uh, short range uh, buses have uh, very high intensity chargers using, using pantograph situations. It may be something for another sector. But again, remember where, the, where our expertise is. Now, where does this confusion leave us? Uh, what direction should we go? As I said, Orkney seems to be make, making its way down the hydrogen route uh, reasonably successfully uh, at this time, with a number of stepping stone projects. Uh, it's given us investment confidence to move on to some bigger and more widespread things. But there's a couple of points to, to, to note here. that We've been having a number of issues with, with regulators, because there are no rules or precedents to be, be called upon. Um, just to be also to be aware that you, there's a lot of noise in the press regarding the difference between global warming and polluting emissions. Anything that's got a carbon fuel is a global warming. Polluting emissions can come from several sources, some of them tracing back to what might be seen naturally. In Orkney, we are training a number of staff and we're gaining the gas experience uh, and expertise as time goes on. Um, and there are opportunities to exploit biogas. Hydrogen, of course, is looking at different storage solutions, which can increase efficiency and effectiveness. So to finish off with, uh, we are uh, leading in, in, into an exciting period. Uh, the diagram on the right there is actually an emergency services diagram for a Toyota Mirai. And it just shows how different these vehicles are from the, the current combustion engine types and the complexity and things we've got to get used to. So there is, there is a lot of technology coming through. Uh, battery technology will, will reduce by a, or in size by another 25% when solid state comes through. There's a, there's a number of uh, flow cell technologies coming through which will increase efficiency. But again, uh, hydrogen and gases will, will catch up uh, rapidly as well with uh, potential for liquid biogas. We have a lot of biomass. Uh, and uh, available, uh, which can be turned into biomethane, uh, uh, hydrogen direct combustion, and, and storage of uh, hydrogen in, in liquid format uh, to reduce pressure. All of that is good stuff. And of course, uh, what is known as power to X, that is uh, converting uh, hydrogen into various fuels that we're familiar with. But again, that takes a lot of processing. Certainly, we're in an in a, in a exciting time, and uh, I hope you found that interesting.
Good evening, uh, I'm Gavin Barr, I'm Director of Development and Infrastructure at Orton Islands Council and I've been asked to give a short presentation this evening focusing on some of the work that's underway to transition our uh, bus and ferry services towards a, a low carbon or a, uh, in due course carbon free uh, uh, situation. Uh, I'm going to do that firstly with uh, just, just two or three slides, but the first, first piece of the presentation focusing on what we have now, giving you a flavour of the services and the fleet, fleets that we currently have in place, followed by a second slide which gives a flavour of some of the, on, the work that's already underway to move towards a low carbon, um, uh, um, low carbon outcome, uh, and obviously some of the work ahead to, to complete that, that journey uh, in, in the months and years ahead. So beginning firstly with um, what do we have now? Um, well, Orkney Islands Council, relatively uniquely uh, within Scotland and indeed within the UK, uh, not only operates uh, bus services but, but also operates uh, ferry services. We we operate um, uh, the uh, the Orkney, Orkney Ferries Limited is a, prim a limited company but operated through through the council and providing um, key lifeline services, essential services to our. North and South Isles communities. Um, some of the characteristics of that fleet, um, well as I have on the slide, it is ancient. Uh, the average uh, age of our vessels is, is over 30 years and we actually op operate a vessel, uh, the Golden Mariana, although uh, those of you that picked up last earlier on this year, we did manage to, uh, we, we have a, a replacement on, on the way for the Golden Mariana, at least an interim replacement with the Nordic Sea, but the Golden Mariana is still operating out in Papua Westry, Westry and is the oldest vessel in the fleet, indeed the oldest vessel in the Scottish ferry fleet as far as we can tell at 40, uh, 46 years. So an ancient ferry fleet, uh, which as we'll come on to is a huge opportunity in terms of the need for, for replacement to, to, to modern 21st century standard um, uh, vessels. Well, characteristics of the current fleet, um, given their age, uh, they, they operate on traditional uh, diesel based fuels, uh, marine diesel, um, and as on the slide, uh, millions of litres of fuel burned every year running these services day in day out uh, through some of the harshest uh, uh, weather and water conditions in, in the country. As I've said, these are lifeline services, so essential, so any changes to the fleet, be that new vessels, new technology, has to be very carefully managed to ensure that it is reliable and it is, uh, it is uh, well, reliability and deliverability of services as key as these are lifeline to, to, to the island community. So that can be a bit of a challenge as we look to innovation and new technology is we have to know what we put in place for these lifeline services will work and will deliver those services day in day out. So that's the ferry services as they stand and an ancient fleet. Uh, bus services, the uh, council also delivers bus services, public bus services and also school bus services through, through contracts. Uh, that current contract is through Stagecoach for the, the public bus services and again as in the slide here and the, the photograph um, the current fleet operated by Stagecoach although in recent years uh, there has been a huge effort to, to um, improve the age profile but on the, on the whole uh, the, it's, it's at the older age of the, the spectrum and again mostly diesel uh, based fuels other than the one electric bus that the council um, brought into the fleet through, through Scottish, Scottish Government funding support um, three or four, four years ago now. Um, so that's the services operated by Orton Islands Council, ferries and buses, uh, and as I said, generally older and generally, um, almost without exception, uh, traditional carbon-based uh, fuel uh, operate, uh, fuel, fueled uh, vessels and buses. Scottish Government services in Orkney then operated uh, the Lifeline service, operated through Circle Northlink. Again, quite an elderly fleet now, uh, 2002, and again based on uh, marine gas oil uh, fuel, fuel. And again, the statistic there in terms of the, the burn, quite a staggering uh, amount of fuel burnt. Uh, again, these are Lifeline services, essential travel to and from Orkney and the Scottish mainland, uh, both from a, a passenger perspective and also a freight perspective. And that is a key consideration as we looked again to, to innovation and bringing in new fleet is how we can ensure reliability uh, for these key lifeline services. There's also the, the privately operated service through Pentland Ferries Limited, a brand new ship uh, last year through the Alfred, um, billed as one of the most environmentally friendly ships uh, on the Scottish Island route, so a real huge step forward there. Uh, although still, as I understand it, still um, MGO based fuels, very efficient and uh, again providing key uh, essential service and defined by the Scottish Government as part of, of the overall um, transportation mix for, for Orkney connections to the mainland. 
uh, part of the, the Scottish Government define that as part of the lifeline. Um, so those are the main uh, ferry and bus services that are current, our fleet that's currently in place. And as I said, there's a huge challenge in that as to the age of the fleet, which is also an opportunity because it does need urgent and, 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 and um, a, a timely replacement. And it's what, what, what opportunities within that, within that uh, to look at uh, jumping a step perhaps to, to some of the newer uh, opportunities for, for, for low carbon uh, solutions. Moving to the, just to give a flavour for the council plan, the, the council, Orn Islands Council, very much supportive of a low carbon agenda, uh, our strategic plan uh, outlining uh, key priorities, all of which have some element of um, focus on, 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 on low carbon and ensuring that we reach a, a better place in terms of uh, the overall sustainability of our activities. May last year declared a climate emergency. And we're now resourcing that uh, just just last month through the approval of a climate change officer. So a person that's going to be employed to drive forward the council and the community agenda in terms of, of, of climate change. One of the key challenges we have though is that all the council's activity now is deeply constrained by the overall squeeze on public services that is in place. Um, across the country, and that's only going to be made worse by the whole COVID um, provisions at the moment. Uh, but we do remain amb ambitious. Carbon neutral is, is absolutely key to where we want to be, um, and innovation also woven through those tr strategic priorities. So there will be challenges, financial challenges, operational challenges, but certainly the political desire and the framework for change is most certainly built into the Council strategic plan. So what next? Um, well, I've mentioned the, the age of the fleet and certainly ferry fleet replacement is very high on the Council's agenda. We've already been making great steps towards that through some of the, the various partner projects underway, looking at hydrogen uh, and, and, and Orkney and the Council and partners around this uh, virtual table have been leading the world in some of the opportunities through the surf and turf and big hit uh, hydrogen projects, the energy system, linking in the, um, the power generated through, through renewable energy into, into our ferry. Um, cold ironing in, in, in Kirkwall. Um, and, and these projects have already been world leading, particularly in terms of the certification and the marine training associated with these uh, this new technology in ships, which has never been done before, has been very challenging, but in Orkney here, uh, very much pushing that forward as a, as, a, as a new agenda. I mentioned at the outset the, in, the ancient nature of our fleet, well, full fleet replacement is essential over the next 10 to 15 years. We would be starting immediately if we could identify the funding source, and this has been a very strong political dialogue with the Scottish Government over many years now uh, in, 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 in terms of having to look towards the, the, the fairness of funding uh, for, for the Scottish fleet. And we have been making some progress there in recent years, but clearly the, the current financial challenges do not make that any easier. Um, but, but fleet replacement is essential, and a part of that will most certainly be uh, looking towards uh, the, the opportunities for low carbon solutions, albeit, as I mentioned at the outset, it's very important that innovation also uh, has reliability associated with it, as these are lifeline services. So full ferry fleet replacement is a huge opportunity. The future bus contracts, we're just about to enter a new bus contract, and within the provisions for that contract, we do have a low carbon innovation clause. There's um, work underway just now that could see a portion of the uh, first the, the renewed fleet being being um, electric, um, and beyond that, uh, within the, the the contract will be provision for the full fleet to, to move towards uh, another uh, energy format uh, over the course of that contract. So very much uh, putting in the, the the law as it were in the contract uh, the requirement to move towards a low carbon, indeed carbon neutral, um, um, position over the the term of that that future bus bus contract. Um, buses are uh, very popular in Orkney uh, compared to other parts of the country. We have seen uh, increases in bus, bus passenger use over the last um, 10 years or so, actually, uh, which is at odds with other parts of the country. So we have a very positive context for people using buses as a means of uh, moving around Orkney. And clearly there's an opportunity there uh, even more so with the low carbon solutions to, to make that an attractive way for people to lower their, their carbon footprint. Scottish Government, the Green Agenda, the COVID recovery, we very much anticipate that being a strong driver of um, funding into the future. And clearly through all of our work now moving forward across the Council, be that ferries, buses or into our property, we will be looking towards um, a low carbon solution. Um, I'm very much looking at some of the challenges we have as, as opportunities to, to, to secure a quick and steady move towards uh, low carbon uh, transportation solutions for Orkney. So hope that's given a, a flavour for what we do and where we might go next. Thank you very much.
Hello, I'm Evelyn Lee. I'm an Assistant Project Manager for Community Energy Scotland and I'm going to talk about electric vehicles. So when electric vehicles are first produced, um, the carbon impact that they have uh, during manufacture is actually higher than um, the manufacture for a petrol or diesel car. And that's shown the difference between this red and grey um, bars here. So the red car being the electric vehicle. But as uh, the use of the vehicle gets more and more, we can actually see that um, the overall carbon impact of electric vehicles is much less than that of petrol or diesel cars, as can be seen by this big difference between these two bars at the end here. So overall, it is better to have an EV for the environment. Now in Orkney, we've currently got about 230 um, fully electric vehicles and then another 40 um, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which makes Orkney the third best county in Scotland in terms of the number of electric vehicles owned per all of the vehicles owned. However, Orkney still has 17,500 vehicles registered in Orkney, 11,300 of which are cars. So we do have an awful long way to go yet. Um, and the vehicles themselves are being able to go longer and longer on each charge with some vehicles um, available in the market now at 250 miles plus. Um, mileage range. So to own an EV, sort of the most obvious way would be to go um, out and buy one outright. However, that's quite a high upfront cost, especially when you compare um, second-hand vehicles with their sort of counterpart um, petrol or diesel vehicle. It'd be quite a high cost. However, owning an electric vehicle over its lifetime is cheaper. So what are some other uh, options? Um, you could lease, which reduces the upfront cost and spreads the, the cost of the EV over many months. Um, or if you want to own the vehicle at the end of the day, you can lease to own, which basically adds a, a lump sum payment at the end. So you can say you have more time to save up for it, basically. Uh, however, you don't have to own a vehicle to be able to, to access an electric vehicle. There are car clubs, which are sort of pay-as-you-go car hire schemes. So you're only paying for a car when you need it. Um, and there might also be community-owned vehicles in your vicinity. So there are two distinct car clubs in Orkney at the moment. The first is the Rousey, Egglesey and Wire Development Trust Car Club, and that's been in operation for many years now, and that uses a Nissan Leaf. Um, more recently, um, Coal Wheels, who are a car club that have over 60 locations across the UK, now have three in Orkney, um, in Ham, Doombe and Kirkwall, and that's thanks to OHAL and the Plugged In Households Fund. Um, and CES through um, uh, Reflex Orkney have been able to site a vehicle at their Kirkwall location at Somerville Square and hope to add another location in Kirkwall soon. Um, and uh, Reflex is also looking at putting in some vehicles in Stromness as well. So if you sign up to Cowills using the Reflex One promo code um, before March 2021, um, you'll be entered into a um, a prize draw to win a weekend in Aberdeen. Um, this is only available to Orkney residents, um, but you'll also receive free lifetime membership, so there's no uh, monthly cost, and also £25 driving credit, so it's a great way to try for free to see whether electric vehicles uh, of the kind that are available in Orkney are for you, or uh, generally whether a car club is the, the way to go for yourselves. Now, EVs uh, in, in the community sphere have been here since uh, 2013. Um, uh, Shappensy Development Trust, uh, Island of Hoy Development Trust and also EV Partnership were able to get um, some EVs in 2013 thanks to Local Energy Scotland funding and um, use them for the community. Um, and Octo, or uh, might know them as Dialobus, also have two electric vehicles um, that they use in their fleet. So if you give them a call, you might be getting um, a lift in an EV. Uh, and then more recently, the Island of Hoya Development Trust and uh, ED Partnership um, through Community Energy Scotland and the Reflex Orkney project have been able to get two ENV 200s um, to each of the different um, Isles groups. Um, and they're being used for the community, um, especially for the pandemic for deliveries. Um, one of the vehicles in each location is a five-seater with wheelchair access. 
um, which means there's also great space for boot as well. Uh, and the ones on EDR are also being used to ferry school children um, to school, which is great. So um, there's the Orkney Electric Vehicle Strategy, which sets out how ORF believes that um, charging should occur and where and how. Um, and the, the main one is, um, if you can, uh, to be charging at home using smart chargers, if you have um, off-street parking. Uh, however, we know that's not uh, going to be available for everyone. So public charging is really important. Um, there's at least 25 different um, charging locations across Orkney at the moment. Uh, and you'll have seen there's more um, being built just recently. So once those are energized, we'll have over, I think, 30 uh, different charging public charging options in Orkney, which is great. Um, and then there's accommodation providers. Uh, is a really good place to be having charging for those that are staying overnight. And the SMILE project um, has been able to get 16 uh, smart chargers uh, in Orkney, uh, many of which are at accommodation sites. And then the Reflex Orkney project is looking at putting in hundreds of smart uh, home chargers um, and then also integrate those into a sort of integrated energy system. Uh, so it's definitely worth looking out for those. So what's needed for the future? First of all, EVs have to be accessible to everyone. So there's more likely to be more leasing and um, sort of car club car sharing schemes. Um, which just reduces that upfront cost, which is far too high for, for many people. Uh, we need long-term or overnight parking uh, charging as for people that aren't able to charge at home um, so that they can leave the vehicle well, overnight, basically, uh, and not have to, to worry too much about that side of it. Um, for those that are able to charge at home, we need flexible, smart home charging. And there's many projects looking at, at how that can be done. Um, more accommodation charging, as I mentioned, uh, more charging options on trunk routes. So specifically, I'm thinking of the A9, um, there needs to be a good robust network. Um, and also there needs to be better resourcing and end of life recycling of EV batteries. Um, there's already been uh, a lot of work in, over the past number of years to actually improve this, um, but we, we do need to, to carry on. So not an Orkney specific <laughs> thing there, but something that, that does need to be done. Uh, thank you. <laughs>